Good afternoon. While pursuing our master's degree in archaeology at the University of Burgundy, uh, Dijon, France, and Paris Sorbonne University, Paris 4, France, we studied respectively textiles from the archaeological site of Grand Oisan in France and Yakut's grave in Siberia. The study of archaeological textiles has revived thanks to a new generation of researchers throughout in Europe and the world. In France, the interest in textiles began in the 19th century in parallel to the growing curiosity for archaeological research. Textile researches may focus on iconographic, technical or anthropological aspects. However, it is the technical study that presents the most significant interest to researchers at this time. This paper's aim is to present several possibilities to study textiles and the wealth of information that can be learned according to issues. Indeed, much of the work done today concerns both identification of plant and animal materials used as spice birds and dyes. With two examples, we will see a comparative scientific approach of two techniques, one using several manipulations and one employing a more classical approach with fewer computer tools. The difference between these methods depends on means available and issues. In the first part, we present the context of two archaeological sites. Then we develop the two techniques employed for the technique analysis. We conclude with a brief presentation of the results and perspective. Brandon Roisin was a medieval mining village located at around 60 kilometers from Grenoble in France. The discovery of, a, of the archaeological artifacts allows us to date the site between the 11th and the 14th century. Particular conditions conserved a huge quantity of organic materials such as leather, wood and textiles. In total, 1,330 35 textiles were discovered. The village was composed of houses, a church and its graveyard, a fortified house, silver and lead mines, as well as industrial districts linked to the treatment of the ore. Textiles studied here come from the B102 zone located at the northwest of the village. This area has revealed this building with washing basins outside and inside of the constructions and pipes. 445 fragments, fabrics and threads from this zone were analyzed. Yakutia is situated in the northeast Siberian and covers a vast area of 3 billion kilometers. Founded in 204 by Eric Rubesi, the MIFSO, la Mission Archaeologique Française en Sibérie Orientale, aims to study ancient DNA. On the field, the MIFSO organized three triennial in three regions in Yakutia, Central Yakuti, Bilui, and Verkoyonsk. As the investigation has had the opportunity to be extended, the French team moved to Northern Siberia. The good conservation of perishable materials, in particular textiles, is due to the permafrost, permanent frozen ground remains characteristic of the Ice Age. Concerning the history of this region, the Russians began colonization of Siberia in the middle of the 16th century during the reign of Ivan IV. The primary goal of Russian colonizers was the search for raw material, including fur, through taxis named Yasak. The conquest of Yakutia also had another purpose, including no, another purpose. Throughout the 18th century, Russia conquered Siberia as far as the Amur Basin. At this stage, it came into contact with a powerful neighbor, China. The Russian Empire wished to establish trade relations with the China, Chinese Empire and sent diplomatic agents. So the Russian Empire had a double benefit with the colonization of Siberia. First, it appends new territories and containing valuable commodities. On the other hand, it came into direct contact with China and started to trade with it. Textiles studied during my master in archaeology are dated between 18th and 19th centuries. Dating was carried out by different chronological methods. 
carbon-14 to chronocultural data and dendrochronology. First, the establishment of a textile copious dedicated to technical analysis is carried out by sampling. Most often, textiles found in archaeological context are poorly maintained and are in the form of fragments. However, in the context of the Yakut textiles, samples were taken on larger parts. Samples are selected based on research issues and on the proper storage of materials for delivery of a lot of information. After the technical analysis, samples should be kept in a dry place. We wish to draw attention to the important, importance of a good non-polluted textile facility in both the archaeological field and the laboratory. Once selected, each textile was photographed front and back. The photographs were taken with natural light and with a scale. The first technical survey put the archaeological object from a state to a three-dimensional image in two dimensions. The technical analysis of textiles is an observation of samples at different scales. Foremost, the textiles are observed with the eyes to describe the appearance. For Brandon Oison, the technical analysis is the first step to study a copious of archaeological textiles. To realize this operation, it is necessary to note several pieces of information on every fragment of textile. Textile ID, its nature, textile or fabric, its measurement, for the warp and the weft, its matters, number of thread per centimeter, direction and degree of twist, diameter, colors, and if possible, the maximum length of the threads. If there is one or several seams, the matter, diameter, sewing stitch, direction, and degree of twist, color of the sewing threads have to be noted. If a decoration is seen, its type, its structure, and a de description should be signaled as a schema of the sample with the important element Steam, decoration, border, warp direction, etc. It is also possible to receive an area on the technical record for the form, finishing, conservation state, packaging, and an interpretation if these points are significant. Potential remarks <laughs> can be noted as well. These steps are realized with several tools. As a part of a classical approach, the thread count and the diameter were noticed with linen testers. One graduated in millimeter and another one graduated in one tenth of millimeters. Details of fabrics were observed and photographed with, with a stereo microscope and a camera. Then plants were necessary, they were realized manually on trans transparent plastic sheets and felt pens. Then information was entered into a table. For the other technique, we note the same information. As part of a textile laboratory analysis, we also use an integrated came under a microscope, which allows, through an image capture software, the taking of photographs. They allow us to identify the weave and to document the characteristics of threads. Picture quality depends on the brightness, but also the resolution and the camera field of view. As part of the study of the Yakut textiles, two image software were used, B-Cell and NXD. This software can also measure the diameters of the thread. In addition, elements constituting the spinning, direction, and degree of twist, the yarn structure. The weaving and the color emerge from this second stage of observation. Sketches of the collected textile are made to locate the collection in an orthonormal. Threads parallel to the x-axis are called the OX, and threads parallel to the y-axis are referred to as OY. As classical study of fabrics, we count the number of threads OX and OY by centimeters. These elements provide information about the density of the thread when mounted on the loom and can provide data about weave structure. After this step, we remove some thread from the textile fragment. When it is not possible to distinguish a difference in constitution between the warp threads and weft threads, a single thread is selected by textile. 
Then, each thread is decomposed using two grippers to separate the fibers. These fibers are deposited between a slide and a cover slip with a drop of distilled water and observed under a microscope. These longitudinal views allow an initial identifi identification of animal and plant fibers. To determine the quality of thread, use the degree of maturity of plant fibers or the species of animal fibers, certain textiles require an observation in cross-section. To realize this view, the selected thread is inserted into a hollow plastic rod containing resin mixed with a catalyst and an accelerator. Then, it is transferred by capillary reaction into the plastic rod. Once become a solid block, the rod removed and the block is placed vertically in a manual microtome. The latter is used to produce cuts of very small thickness of few microns for observing microscope sections of the fibers. From these different stages of observations applied to samples from the Yakut clauses, Data were first recording on paper grid, and a database was designed to present the most information, photographs, measurements, sketches, dimensions. Other analyses were made with the help of Christophe Moulera at the Quai Museum in Paris. No pigment analysis was realized. Nevertheless, traces of blue and red dyes were seen on 14 textiles, 11 tabbies, and one twill had a beige background and red weft face bands. Two two one twills had a blue background and a beige wet, weft face tabby bands. Fibers from colored threads were observed under a microscope. This observation showed that fibers were not completely soaked in the middle. A scanning electron microscope, SEM, was used to observe and photograph threads from five fabrics and plant matter with a high manif magnify power. The same observation allowed to highlight the worn aspect of the surface of the wool fibers and to show the presence of a layer of sediment around, around fibers. Finally, analysis of chemical components from this envelope were made with the same and combined software. Lead is the most represented with rates between 4 and 48 percent. Barium and silicon are also present in huge quantities. Barium is a component of the barite, element sometimes found in the vein or rock of Brandonoise. Silicon is combined to the quartz, sometimes present too in the vein or, or rock. Silver appeared briefly on screen. Nevertheless, the rate, the rate was too weak compared to the scale used. Analysis of samples founded in Yakutia was able to demonstrate the diversity of animal fibers, wild and domestic silk, wool, hair, hand plant fibers, cotton, linen, but also the diversity of weave, tabby, twill, or satin. There are two silk categories domestic silk and wild silk. In both cases, and whatever the species, the worm produces silk thread to make a cocoon, in which it is transformed into, into a butterfly. The cocoon is formed by a wire network. The shapes, colors, and sizes differ depending on the species of the worm. However, the cocoon wire is fragile, which is why it takes many cocoons to form a thick thread. Domestic silk is produced by the species Bombyx mori, which is, which is native to China. To the naked eye, Bombyx mori silk has a shiny appearance. Viewed longitudinally, fibers resemble regular tubes, and they do not exhibit twisting. In cross-section, the fibers have a triangular shape whose vertices are rounded. The wild silk threads are from cocoon spun by wild or semi-domesticated silk worms. There are several types, but the best known are the anteriaria. Viewed longitudinally, wild silks are very similar to the Bombyx mori silk, that is, transparent and regular tubes, but have the distinction of being finely striated longitudinally. In cross-section, they have an elongated triangular shape. It is interesting to distinguish between the domestic silk and the wild silk during the technical analysis because there is a distinction in quality. 
wild silk is rare and a better kind of silk. And we can suggest some ideas for the origin of these silks. China is one of the major silk producers, including domestic silk Bombix Mori species and wild silk Anteraria. So it seems that these fabrics were from China. However, France and Italy were also major producers during the 18th and 19th centuries. Russia exchanges many raw materials, furs, leathers, with France against finished products, silk and wool fabrics. Also, from these distinctions, it is possible to reflect on the textile as a symbol, in particular a symbol of wealth in the Yakut samples, and reflect about different Yakut graves, or exchanges between Russia and Yakutia, or China and Yakutia. In conclusion, this comparative approach highlights that it is possible to study textiles in various, way, uh, various ways and that the technique used depends on issues of the corpus. Concerning the textiles from, from Brandon Oisan, it was not necessary to identify the nature of fibers but to understand their functions into the context. On the contrary, for the Yakut sample, the major issue was to identify fibers, fibers for reflect about the origin of textiles. In a near future, textiles from Brandon Oisan will be analyzed during my doctoral research at the University of Clermont-Ferrand. And a new report realized by the Emma FSO about the study of the Yakuts grave will be contribute to the study of that material. The study of archaeological textiles is still not widespread among French archaeologists. Nevertheless, this domain slowly gains ground. Thanks to the development of new technologies, it's possible to explore the textiles more deeply and to think of new hypotheses, things that were impossible in the recent past. Perhaps one day it will be possible to study a fragment without manipulating it. The future will tell us. Textiles provide information more often than other materials and should not be ignored. They are the privileged witnesses of contacts and exchanges between people, but they are also material and obvious visual sources. Also, we should remember that from a sociological point of view, textiles provide information regarding their use in clothing in particular. Thank you for your attention.